Hello everybody, welcome to session 2 of chapter electricity. We will be learning to explain types of electricity. Uh, we will be defining fuse and state its uses. Uh, working mechanism of bicycle dynamo, generator, electric, electric motor, inverter, charge and transformer. We will be learning the working mechanism of these devices uh, and finally we will be able to list safety measures when using electricity let's begin with types of electricity there are two types of electricity the first is alternating current or ac current as you see the name is alternating current means this type of current changes the direction alternately i mean to say you can see here this is ac current this is source of ac current and what happens is once the current will flow in anti-clockwise direction and other time it will flow in clockwise direction so here the direction of current keeps on changing once it will flow clockwise direction and other time it will flow anti-clockwise direction so such current is called alternating current that is why the definition of alternating current is the current electricity which changes its polarity is known as AC current and it is produced by generator the next current is direct current or DC current and this current is produced by cell or battery we can say in battery the polarity of battery is always fixed For example one side of battery is always negative terminal and other side of battery is positive since the battery has fixed terminal that is why the flow of current produced by battery is always in one direction so such current which flows in only one direction this kind of current is called direct current and this is produced by cell or battery so in day to day life we are using alternative current because the current that is produced by uh, generator or dynamo is AC current and here the difference between AC current and DC current is that AC current uh, it keeps on changing its polarity whereas DC current it always flows in one direction and the next is it is produced by generator or dynamo also you can say whereas direct current is produced by cell and the next is AC current uh, the current that is produced by dynamo it has more value means the value of AC current is more whereas DC current it has got low voltage now let's talk about fuse so fuse is simply a piece of wire that is kept in the circuit and the, the main purpose of keeping fuse in the circuit is to protect the electric device that is connected in the circuit now question may come how it can protect the electric device in some cases what may happen is in the circuit there might be flow of high voltage current and when high voltage current passes through the electric devices that device may get damaged so in order to prevent the flow of high voltage current in the circuit the fuse is joined in the circuit and fuse when high voltage current passes through the circuit this fuse wire has low melting point so when high voltage current passes through it the temperature of wire rises and this since it has low melting point so it will melt and because of melting this fuse wire will break down and high voltage current stops flowing in the circuit so in this way the fuse protects the uh, uh, high i mean electric devices from the high voltage current so that is why fuse is a piece of thin wire and what does it do is it prevents flow of high voltage current in the circuit how by melting is known as fuse and it is simply the wire but this wire is not made up of pure metal it is made up of alloy of tin and lead and it is always connected in live wire and phase wire of the circuit it means to say in a circuit there are two wire one is called live wire another is called neutral wire <coughs> the wire through which current flows is called live wire so it is all since uh, in live wire the current flows that is why fuse must be connected in live wire <coughs> uh, 
But nowadays, in place of this fuse wire, uh, one device is designed. This is called MCB, miniature circuit breaker, uh, is used in place of fuse because uh, it is automatic uh, in function. It means to say, in place of fuse wire, MCB is connected. So when there is flow of high voltage current, this switch gets automatically off. So in this way, the device is protected in the circuit and we can again switch on the switch and then it will again work as a normal. So this is easy to use. That's why in place of fuse, nowadays MCB is used uh, because it is very easy to use and plus it is automatic in nature. Now bicycle dynamo. Uh, so since it is dynamo, so it is source of electricity. So what does it do is it uh, it converts uh, mechanical energy into uh, let's say electric energy and here uh, this is bicycle dynamo so here we'll be talking about dynamo which is uh, used in bicycle so this is the structure of bicycle dynamo and if you see internally then it consists of one permanent magnet and near the permanent magnet a coil of insulated wire is kept uh, and the coil uh, is kept near the magnet and the magnet is connected to the head of the dynamo uh, and this head of dynamo is kept joined with the bicycle tire. So when the wheel of bicycle rotates then what will happen since the head of the bicycle dynamo is joined with the wheel so the, because of movement of wheel the head of the bicycle dynamo also rotates and when it rotates with the head the, with the magnet is joined so the magnet start rotating and when magnet starts rotating the magnetic flux the magnetic flux means the magnetic lines of force produced by the magnet start changing because of rotation and when the magnetic flux changes then the electrons start flowing in the wire and the flow of electron means current so because of producing the current electricity over here the bulb that is connected to the dynamo it starts glowing and here EMF is induced means uh, the current, the full form of EMF is electromotive force. It means a current. In general, we can understand it as a current. So current is induced or produced in it. So what is the reason behind production of current? It means to say that when the wheel rotates, the head of the dynamo is joined with the bicycle tire or wheel. And when the head rotates, the, the, the magnet is also connected to the head. So that's why the magnet starts rotating and when magnet starts rotating the magnetic lines of flow force produced by the magnet and the group of magnetic lines of force is called magnetic flux it will change and when it is change as the coil of wire nearby it the electron present in the wire start moving and the start moving means the electron starts to flow in the wire and if the if the electron starts to move it means electricity has produced which makes the bulb glowing so this is how bicycle dynamo functions now let's talk about generator so the working uh, principle of generator and dynamo is same so here also you can see the magnets are kept and between the two poles of magnet uh, the wire is kept so all the time magnetic lines of force always move from north pole to south pole so here the wire is in stationary it is not moving so in that case what happens is the magnetic lines of force continuously move from north to south pole so there are thousands of magnetic lines of force moving from north pole to south pole so that's why the group of magnetic lines of force is called magnetic flux so once we start rotating the wire then what will happen the magnetic lines of force which was moving from north to south it starts changing and when it starts changing, like in bicycle dynamo, the electrons starts move starts moving through the wire, and because of that, current is produced, and this is how the generator functions. So, a device that converts mechanical energy into electric energy, as I told you, dynamo and generator as they have got same working mechanism. So, both dynamo and generator, what does it do? Is they convert mechanical energy. Mechanical energy means movement. Here the coil has started moving, so means kinetic energy. So kinetic energy, when it starts moving, then what will produce? Electric energy is produced. So that's why 
both dynamo and generator they convert mechanical energy into electrical energy and such device is called generator so when the coil is rotated in the magnetic field as i told you the coil of the wire is kept between the magnetic field of two poles of magnet then what happens the magnetic flux means magnetic lines of force passing through the coil changes because it has started moving and because of that electricity is produced in the wire due to movement of electron and the mechanical energy needed for the rotation for of the coil of the wire is done by the water or wind the power or petrol diesel also can move it so this is how generator or diesel function in generator dynamo we can uh, change the strength of induced emf induced emf means produced current we can change we can change the intensity we can change the amount we can increase we can decrease the amount of produced current here so here question is how can we increase the produced current by generator or dynamo the one is by increasing the number of turns in the coil because here you can see the coils are kept near the magnet so if you increase more number of coils then the amount of current produced here is more okay because when this magnet starts rotating then what will happen the electrons start flowing so if there is more coil then more electron starts moving and that makes the more amount of induced current or produced current next is by increasing the strength of magnetic field it means to say that if you take a strong magnet then it can cause the movement of more electrons and more electrons means more current is produced so that's why the next way of increasing the current produced by dynamo or generator is taking the strong magnet now increasing the speed of rotation of coil in the magnetic field here we can either increase the speed of rotation of magnet or we can rotate even the coil of wire in both cases what will happen when you increase the rotation then the more magnetic flux will change more magnetic lines of force change and more magnetic lines of force change which means more electrons move from the wire which makes the increase in the amount of current and lastly by decreasing the distance between the coil and magnet so means that whatever the gap is between the magnet and the coil if you make more closure then what will happen it can it can make the movement of more electrons and that also makes the more current produced so there are four ways to increase the amount of current by the dynamo generator one is increasing the number of coil next is increasing the i mean to say taking the more stronger magnet and next is increasing the rotation speed of magnet or coil of wire or next is the keeping the gap less gap between the magnet and the coil in all these cases the more electrons will flow in the circuit and that causes increase in the amount of induced current now here is the difference between dynamo and generator Though dynamo and generator they have same working mechanism, but there is still some differences. Dynamos it produces less, less electricity because here we can use a small magnet, but generator it can produce more electricity. And in dynamo it is used permanent magnet, whereas in generator it uses electric magnet. So these are the differences between dynamo and generator. Now let's talk about motor effect. So the figure looks similar with the figure of generator, but the working mechanism is just opposite than the generator. What happens here is there are magnetic lines of force of magnet produced by the magnet, which is always moved from north to southward. So there is magnetic lines of force of magnet, and next is uh, when you pass the current through the wire then around the wire also the magnetic field is developed so it means there are two magnetic field one is a magnet and other is a current electricity once again there is magnet and then magnet can have their own magnetic field and uh, when current is passed through the wire then around the wire also magnetic field is developed that means 
there are two magnetic fields one is of magnet and one is of current electricity so these two magnetic field the property of magnetic field is they never overlap each other so because of this property what will happen is the magnetic field of magnet and the magnetic field of current they repel each other and because of repulsion the wire starts moving and this movement of wire is called motor effect so that is why when a current carrying conductor wire you can see this is the conducting wire and when the current starts flowing through the wire is kept between the magnetic field of two poles of magnet then what will happen as i explained to you this wire starts moving and this effect is called motor effect the meaning of motor is movement so here wire has started moving and this phenomenon is called motor effect and why wire has started moving as i explained to you before there are two magnetic field one is produced by magnet and other is produced by current and um, one magnetic field never overlap another magnetic field so that's why they repel each other and because of repulsion the wire moves and this effect is called motor effect and this based on this effect various uh, rotating devices are made the device which can rotate those all the electric devices working mechanism is motor effect like electric motor you, you might have seen electric motor or fan or grinder or washing machine cd player in all the devices what will happen uh, the motor is present there and the motor starts rotating when you put on switch because of motor effect electric motor so electric motor what does it do you pass the current and then what will happen that motor starts moving so means here electric energy is converting into mechanical energy and this kind of device is called electric motor and its working principle is of course motor effect and it is used in domestic appliances such as electric fan washing machine vacuum cleaner water pump etc where they are rotating the difference between generator and motor generator uh, it produces electric energy by converting mechanical energy so that's why generator is uh, the device which converts mechanical energy into electric energy whereas motor is just reverse what does it do it converts electrical energy into mechanical energy and generator is working principle is electromagnetic induction that magnetic flux when magnetic flux is changed by the wire then current is produced that principle is called electromagnetic induction that's why its working principle is known as electromagnetic induction whereas the working principle of electric motor is motor effect that we just learned the inverter uh, nowadays we don't have load setting but if you remember when we wish to have 20 hours long in i mean load setting this inverter was you know widely used in each and every house so what inverter used to do when there was load setting then it was producing the stored current it was converting the stored current in the battery into ac current and that it was working with the all the electric device which are using ac current so what the inverter can do it can convert dc current that is produced by the battery into ac current and that ac current is consumed by the our electric appliances in our house similarly when there is power then what will happen our main supply has ac current that will be converted into dc current and it will store in the battery that means inverter can do both job it can convert dc con it can convert dc current stored in the battery into ac current and similarly when there is power supply it can convert ac current into dc current and will store in the battery so inverter is a device which converts dc current to ac current and vice versa is known as inverter so what is it when there is flow of current in the circuit i mean to say when there is power supply then what inverter will do it will convert the ac current uh, into direct current dc current and it will be stored in the battery and when there is a load setting then what will happen this inverter uh, converts the stored dc current in the battery into ac current and it will be supplied to those appliances and it will function like here electric bulb tv radio computer mobile they all consume ac current so how those ac current i mean 
appliances get AC current, the inverter converts DC current that is in the battery into AC current and that will be consumed by the these electric devices. The charger, of course, it will charge the storage battery of device. So it's a device that is used for charging of storage battery of devices called charger. Now here we have another device called transformer. So the meaning of transformer you change, transform. So this device you might have seen in your choke, uh, which is kept by the Nepal Electricity Authority. It is seen in every choke of Kathmandu or your city. So a transformer is a device and what does it do? It converts, it changes the voltage of AC current. It can change the power of AC current, voltage of AC current. The working principle of this instrument is principle of mutual induction. There are two coils, so what they do, they induce each other. That's why the principle is, working principle is principle of mutual induction. And it is of two types, step up transformer and step down transformer. So let's learn each of them. Before then that, let's learn the structure of transformer inside the box, inside this box of transformer you will find this kind of structure and this is called core so it is made of rectangular core and this core is made up of sheets of soft iron i mean to say pure iron and they are glued and covered by the burnish or select they are insulated they are covered they are not uh, you know like uncovered they are covered by the material called burnish or select they must be insulated after that the it is with the two coils and these two coils of wire are also insulated it means here is no connection between the coils of wire and the core and similarly there is no connection between the this coil of wire and this coil of wire and from the wire one coil what do you do we supply the current whose current you want to convert the voltage so the coil of wire through which we send the current, that coil is called primary coil. And the voltage that is sent is called primary voltage or input voltage. And whatever the current is produced here, from the other coil, you get the current. And that current, that coil which from which you get the current, that is called secondary coil. And the voltage is called secondary voltage or output voltage. The EMF of AC source, EMF means as I told you the full form of EMF is electromotive force of AC source supply applied across the primary coil is called input voltage. So already I told you this uh, source is called input voltage or primary voltage and here the produced voltage is called secondary voltage or output voltage. And in transformer how much energy that you have supplied here the same amount of energy will be produced. Only what will change? Voltage will change. But the energy that is supplied here and the energy sub, uh, produced here are same because there is a saying, energy neither be created nor be destroyed. So whatever the energy you have sent in, same amount of energy will be produced. So there will be no change in the amount of energy, only the voltage will change. This is what the function of transformer is. So let's discuss about a step of transformer. So this figure is a step of transformer. Transformer. So looking at this figure, you should be able to identify the step of transformer. So how to identify is always check the secondary coil. So output means secondary. Through the input you send in the current and the coil through which you send in the current, that coil is called primary coil. And the coil from where you get the current, that is called secondary coil. And the obtained voltage is called output voltage or secondary voltage. Always compare the number of coils. If the secondary coil has more number of coil than the primary coil, that means it can produce more voltage of AC current. Means whatever the voltage you have sent in, because of more number of coils in secondary coil, you will get more. So means here the low voltage of AC current is changing into high voltage of AC current because of more turning of secondary coil. So such transformer is called step up. Up means low to high. So 
The transformer which converts low to high voltage of AC current is known as step up transformer. So this figure is a step up transformer. Why? Because secondary coil has more turning, so it will produce more voltage of AC current. And if since it is converting low to high, it is called step up transformer, and it has more number of secondary coil than primary coil. And it is used by powerhouse because the powerhouse produces current and that current has current has to send to long far distance so to send in far distance that current has to send in high voltage so to send the current in high voltage in powerhouse the current first convert into high voltage using step up transformer and send to the different cities using the high voltage cable now this is a step down transformer again i told you beforehand that to identify the transformer always check secondary coil so you can compare the number of turning in input coil and output coil so in secondary coil you can see there is less number of secondary coil that means it can produce low voltage of AC current so means it was sent high voltage of current and it is producing low voltage so means it is converting high voltage of AC current into low voltage of AC current that's why it is called the step down transformer so hopefully you will be able to identify a step down transformer looking at secondary coil so this step down transformer has got least number of secondary coil so means it can produce low voltage of ac current so since it is converting high to low voltage of ac current it is known as step down transformer and it has less number of secondary coil than primary coil and it is used in house because in our house our device need low voltage of AC current that is why the transformer converts into low voltage and then send to our home and let me tell you uh, the transformer can change the voltage of only AC current no DC current it cannot change the voltage of DC current now safety measure in using electricity of course electricity is very much helpful and without electricity we can't imagine our life but side by side it is very risky as well so that's why whenever we are using electricity we must be very much careful the first is all the time whenever you are using electricity the wire that we are using it must be high quality and it must be a proper amperage proper amperage means proper capacity like example if you want to flow the current of 10 ampere in the wire then it must be of 10 ampere or more than that we never flow the 10 ampere current through the wire of 5 ampere if if the high current flows through the current having low capacity then that wire gets heated and can cause fire and similarly it must be well insulated so such wire you must be using and whenever you are using naked wires and joints it must be covered very properly with the tape and connection of plugs, switches and sockets should be always tight so whatever the connection you are making it should be tight it should not be left loose otherwise it can cause the fire and any defective plugs, switches and sockets uh, which are not functioning properly it should not be used continuously it should be replaced as soon as possible and fuse already I talked to you fuse it is a piece of wire and what does it do it prevents the flow of high voltage current but whenever you are using the fuse then fuse is of different capacity so if you are using high voltage devices then you should use the fuse of high ampere and if you are using the device of low current then the, you should be putting the fuse of low ampere so whenever you are using any device then always you should put the fuse of proper capacity so we use various repairing tools to uh, fix the electricity problem so whatever the tools we are using like a screwdriver tester it should be always proper insulated all the electric appliances should be properly earthed means earthing should be done uh, the main purpose of doing earthing is in case there is short circuit then what may happen is if there is no earthing then if you touch the device then you will get shock and that can result the death but if there is earthing done then what will happen 
in, uh, then if there is electric shock, electric I mean to say short circuit, then what will happen whatever the current that is leaked on the device through this earthing wire it can go to the earth and if it touch such device you will not get any kind of shock. So that's why earthing helps to get us safety from the getting electric shock. And switches and fuse should be connected to live wire. Already I told you there are two types of wires in the circuit, live wire and neutral wire. Since through the live wire current flows, so that's why all the time we should be keeping switch and fuses in live wire, not in neutral wire. Main switch, uh, whenever you are doing any kind of repairing or maintenance, the main switch uh, we should always put up because uh, if you do the repairing or maintenance work uh, without uh, concerning main switch, then you may get electric shock. And if there is a fire caused due to the electricity problem, the neighbor use water to use uh, to extinguish the fire because it can give you electric shock. <laughs>